Welcome back to the Old Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by DeVoe Yates, music supervisor for Dickinson, season two, which is on Apple TV Plus right now. Uh, DeVoe, I just wanted to start, you know, talking about, I guess, for you going into season two, how did you want to evolve or what were your goals, I guess, for some of the, the soundtrack choices that you guys wanted to make this season as opposed to last season? Well, we kind of, you know, after season one, we knew what the sound was. Uh, and then, you know, Elena had talked to me at the end of season one about what season two was about. So just give me a lot of time to really focus on, you know, the themes like the, you know, the eyesight, uh, fame, all that sort of stuff. So there's just a lot more time to really prep and, uh, you know, gather my thoughts and music for what uh, would be the soundtrack, I guess, for the season. Yeah, you mentioned fame. Obviously, I think that's like a huge part of uh, this this current season. How did like what for you like what did how did that how did you synthesize that into like the the song, soundtrack choices? Like? Well, there's like you know everybody wants to be famous. The song there's like uh, picture my face. There's I mean there's a lot of songs we didn't use obviously, but there was just like you know I had a folder of just like all these things that had to do with fame, um, you know, the different songs. And then, you know, I think the the score itself is, is a bit different as well. It's a little bit darker, uh, you know, for season two, uh, which was something we kind of consciously did. Um, uh, so yeah, I think, I think that uh, it kind of it captures what we were trying to do with fame, I think. Hopefully. Yeah, no, you mentioned the score. How do you like, one of the things I, I actually talked to Drum and Lanes and Ian earlier this week, and uh, it's a, one of the things I would love about their score is that it sounds like pop music, right? Like it's like mm-hmm. very much like not a traditional uh, score, certainly not for a period piece. And I guess for you with the music, as being a music supervisor and stuff, how do you work with them to make sure all that is like kind of flowing together? So it does sound like, you know, in, in, in step with the music, uh, the, the, the songs and stuff that you guys are picking. Uh, well, I think before they came aboard season one, we kind of, we kind of found the sound by using you know kind of instrumentals uh kind of pop instrumentals to kind of get the sound of the show to some degree and then uh they kind of came in and just made it all one cohesive sound um you know but so we'll tamp with some things sometimes but um a lot of times we'll use uh, for season two we use some of their season one score to tamp with obviously and then mm-hmm. they kind of just uh built on it you know and kind of evolved it on their own to some degree but yeah yeah the other collaboration I want to ask you about was with Gabe, obviously, who does uh, the great music supervisor as well. I guess, how do you guys work together? And especially on this show, like, how do you kind of, like, tackle that, I guess? Like, how does that relationship work? Well, uh, like, for the New York shows, generally, uh, yeah, basically, I'll do creative for, like, for this and, like, uh, Gemstones. And then uh, he and his group will take care of clearances and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's cool. So I want to ask you about some specific songs, if that's okay, from this season, because I just thought they were like, sure. it's really, really great. So uh, I, so uh, you kind of like start off in episode one with that montage set to uh, Wild Wild Woman. I guess, can you talk a little about, um, yeah, the choice, that choice and like kind of doing that? Because I think it's like a great way to start. Well, I think we were, looking, you know, we were looking for a good song to kind of like establish the season and the characters uh, from the get-go. And that, you know, that really spoke to Emily's character, but it also had just a kind of a nice energy to it, you know, to get, get the season going. Mm-hmm. The other thing was, so she has a relationship this season with uh, Samuel Bowles, and like mm-hmm. it kind of ends up in in a bit of a, a much darker spot than maybe you think, at least at first. Not not necessarily a spoiler because the show's been out for for months, but I mm-hmm. noticed a lot of the songs you guys end up using for um, for her scenes with him, or like any kind of about have, have like devil in the title. Was that an intentional thing? So like in episode five, she has like a big fantasy about him, yeah. and it's like <laughs> devils in the back seat is like the song of her. That and scene. It was, it was definitely conscious. I mean, I think at the end of season one, where we kind of talked, she, Elena kind of presented him as the devil. Like he's the, you know, <laughs> he's the tempter, you know, but with fame and like, uh, you know, so that was kind of, that was definitely conscious. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It's really funny because I was like, oh, devil, there's devil, in the, devil's in the back seat in episode five. And then later you have uh, Devil I Know, I think is another one. Yeah. When he changes over the slums. Yeah. 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 It's like really, it's pretty clever. And it's like the song's really, work i just not hopping not back subtle, but yeah <laughs> no, i mean like it's a little subtle i guess if you don't know the song maybe you're sitting there she's having it maybe it's like a little added yeah, yeah, yeah. um and other so uh, you mentioned like drum and lace and stuff too we we're talking about that uh, in episode six they're obviously at the opera and you have that original song mm-hmm. uh split the lark can you talk uh, like i mean i know that was like them coming up with that but you guys can you guys talk about how you and elena and and and, and they also all of you guys like talked about like deciding on that rather than going with you know, deciding on having it be 
a song based on her actual poem rather than like a needle drop I guess. So it started with Elena wanting to do that poem as a song and you know she was at the opera so we we're trying to figure out I think it was a question originally of, it was, was Haley going to sing it herself or was it going to be Ella singing it then we decided it'd be kind of cool to have you know the 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 singer and the and La Traviata changes into Sue and sings a song to her uh, or sings her poem back to her basically but um that was Elena's idea and then um I th I kind of then I went to Ian and Sophia and uh presented that to, to them and then uh uh, yeah, I sent them a couple of like, I think you like reference ideas, I think, but the, yeah, they kind of took it and ran with it. We did maybe two or three different versions before we kind of landed on the one that's in the show. And I think we even did like one past that was like, that was even like a little more popular that we didn't uh, end up going with. But yeah. And then, Do you, and remember, then you know, yeah. And then Ella oh, yeah. came in and sang it, and that was just amazing. Like her voice is insane. It's really great. Did you, I mean, were you aware that she was able, like, do you know that, like going in? I mean, obviously, like Haley's a singer, but did that you she know could that? sing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, you know, she's done musicals before. Uh, I just had never, you know, I didn't, it was just being there on the recording, but <laughs> there was crazy. I was like, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll help her. I didn't have to do anything. She just kind of like, you know, <laughs> just came in and just killed it. Uh, uh, but, you know, like, it, it's funny because like a, a lot of the cast can sing, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Toby and Jane and uh, Ella and Haley. Yeah. So maybe a musical in future, uh, <laughs> a musical episode in future seasons, maybe. Who could say? Uh, <laughs> with, with that. <laughs> Uh, what would you remember what the references were for you for, for Split the Lark for that song? Like what you sent them as like reference points? It's okay if not. I can't remember. I remember, I remember, I remember the image of the artwork. I can't, I think it was like some Johnny Jewel remix or something, but um, huh. it, was, it was kind of like it had the kind of like uh, cinematic orchestral kind of yeah. vibe to it. Uh, it was a reference I think I sent, but um, the, uh, the, I think. Yeah, they, it was it was really them. Like, they kind of went off and did their thing. But uh, I think they they probably mentioned you. But I think they kind of went with like a slight Bond, uh, mm -hmm. icing, You know, to kind of get whatever that when it kicks in on that push into her. And then, you know, it was really cool in the actual mix for the show. But you know, part of it was like, um, you know, fig how, how to figuring out how it went from the opera into that song. So yeah, we p we picked the where we were going out in that uh, in the opera. And then when the song be began, so that they could be, you know, kind of seamless. So that was a, a big challenge too, was just like kind of lining up all the opera music. So it all kind of timed out with where they would be at, you know, any given point in the- in Yeah. The and then also like, I mean, like I, the going and later in that episode, you have the Maggie Rogers. It feels like a lot of the music, you guys are really thinking about like how the music is gonna, in an episode maybe is gonna like tie into the next song, right? Is that, would you, is that to how some, we guys kind of work? Degree, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, it, I mean, sometimes it's just a little free for all, but- uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that Maggie Rogers is like a, a great, uh, a great moment. And then, you know, there's the Teenage Head song at the end of six. Um, so. Which I like too, because a lot of times you guys don't, uh, at least in this season, there wasn't a lot of like, uh, like classic rock, let's say, right? Like a lot more, like a lot yeah, of maybe I mean, are more modern. I think we try and mix it up a little bit. So it's not always exactly what you'd expect, like a current pop song. So it's a, like, yeah, I think we use like some old Nick Cave at, at times and like mm -hmm. this Teenage Head song, I think it's from like 1979, I believe. So try and keep it, you know, a, 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 a good variety of music, mostly current stuff, but yeah. So like with that Teenage Head song, that's another one I was like, oh, that's cool. And like not, I guess, like like I said, like a classic rock song that's not super overused, let's say, right? Like it's not like an yeah. expected needle drop. Do you, as a music supervisor, do you always like kind of like Picking, like trying to think of things that are off maybe older songs maybe that are off the beaten path of like classic rock radio or whatever people listen to now I think yeah just generally songs that are kind of off the radar or not overused you know so I think you want people to kind of like if, if hopefully they can experience that song for the first time in that scene and with that moment and so you know when you think about that song from that point on you think about that moment in that scene and what it means to you I mean I think uh you know for me you know, it was like when I walked out, I was in college and I saw Reservoir Dogs and I walked out and like, you know, all of those songs I wasn't familiar with. And when I walked out, like from that point on, those songs, whenever I, you know, stuck in the middle with you, you always think about that scene, obviously. So like, <clears throat> that's the hope I think is that you're kind of presenting music to people for the first time in some ways. And like, you know, and, and, and sharing artists and music with people and, and, and uh, you know, and then also like elevating that moment and those, mm -hmm those emotions or humor or whatever it is, you know, uh, for that moment in the show. But then also, you know, when you walk away, listen to that soundtrack, like you, you think about, you know, the, yeah. 
No, I, I just had that uh, yesterday. I was sitting, I was watching something, and it was uh, Marvin Gaye's Inner City Blues. I think came on, and I was like, oh, I immediately was like, oh, Zodiac. I remember in Zodiac, yeah, yeah, David Fincher yeah. used that, and it's like a class. Obviously, that's like a fame song, but I was like, still like immediately, I, my mind went to Zodiac, and it is funny how I think you get that a lot, like you said, right. like, with uh, with film and television needle drops, or you know, they're like it's a great way to like kind of tie that song forever to the memory of the show yeah, or film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, the other, a, a fun one, a, a two more kind of wanted to talk to you about for like specifics, but like I loved, uh, I thought I heard, t- t- I think I heard the serial theme and the, cause there's a scene like in, later in the season episode nine, they're talking about, uh, they're making, it's like a very funny scene for those who have not seen, but they are talking about like, yeah, there's always like kind a of podcast like, or something. And, yeah. There's uh, always kind of reference to I me. Mean, there's kind of, par- they, we are trying to present parallels yeah. time to like modern yes. times and like, you know, those guys are sitting around kind of talking about basically talking about doing a podcast so yeah. like, we thought that would be kind of a funny joke to put the serial thing in there i think that was kind of one of the more recognizable ones that kind yeah, of yeah for sure and then uh i guess the last one I was just at the end it's we, you mentioned like kind of like tying a song to a moment so mm-hmm. the season ends with like kind of emily and sue and in, in a taking a, I mean, a next level for their relationship that obviously i'm sure the show will explore in season three more but like you ended that um sweet spirit song that's great and i get like really like really kind of like the way it kind of like full like comes in low right as you kind of like hit the hit the post into the credits I guess can you talk about like what did you try there and like when did you decide on that track for the last moments I guess there were two different tracks for that moment up until the end uh there was a child song uh and then the sweet spirit song uh and it was it was a close battle, <laughs> you know. But I think the, the sweet spirit song just really kind of gets got you going more. And I think it just really kind of uh, tied up everything well with with their their love and the, the romance, you know. Yeah. Were, and and it just kind of gives you had you going out on a you know with energy and. It's it's quite good, I guess. So like, how do you like how do you work with like Elena? Then like, is she? Are you like kind of like does she have suggestions for you how does that whole thing work and like how did like how does it look in the scripts like let's say at that moment at the end of that script like what is scripts, it like what's in there basically in the scripts yeah. generally there's like a, a you know they'll put in like a song reference or where the song might go or whatever but we don't rarely do we ever use the song that's scripted um but just kind of a, it's just kind of like a, an idea or a placeholder for what you know so i'll pull songs uh sometimes i'll pull songs you know B- b- before for editorial so like when they get the scenes from the set they already have the songs there and they can play with them and then you know other times i'll just they send me split split they call it split track uh quick times so i can mm-hmm. just um the music separated from the from the uh the dialogue so i can cut in music on my end so sometimes i'll just uh you know I'll, I'll cut it in and send elena like three or four options or whatever and she'll you know decide on what that is and sometimes you know we'll just like like the sand bowl scene where he first appears uh in season two like i you know before they shot that i'd send over that uh channel trace song and uh we were like oh yeah let's just do this and like have him come in come in slow motion so sometimes it's like even before they shoot we'll we'll pick a song for them to kind of like kind of shoot to kind of in like a music video sort of way i guess yeah yeah no that's really cool i guess for you like i can you talk a little about like your background in this and like how you got into music i, I think it's obviously something that people are fascinated by and obviously like it's like you said like we're talking about like reservoir dogs or all these different movies that are like so the songs are so ingrained with the, these films and like kind of like really affect people i guess how did you get into this even? i mean i've just always really been into music uh, since i was little even I mean, at soundtracks a lot too you know and um i think i don't know i didn't really think about it as a career path i think it was just always really into soundtracks and the way music could be married to picture and moments you know and um, I, after I went to film school and I used a lot of music in my, in my short films. And then, uh, you know, I graduated and went to LA. I was a music editor for a magazine for a bit. And then uh, my friends got an HBO show uh, called Eastbound and Down. And I gave them some music for that show, which they liked. And then the you know, second season of that show, I started kind of helping out more with music. And then it kind of evolved into, you know, doing music you know, it's a, it a, it a full-time gig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess for, like, we meant, like, for season three of Dickinson, obviously, I know they're kind of, like, certainly, it, it, I'm assuming, like, in production now or, like, starting soon or whatever, I guess, what are your, 
you know, what are your some early thoughts on like, where do you think the music is going to go? I would imagine based on like where the season leaves off and also the historical context, it's maybe going to be a darker season, but I guess for you, like, where do you, uh, what are you thinking so far early stages on the music? Well, we're in the middle of it right now. I think we're a little more halfway down, more than halfway down with shooting, but um, you're right. It is like a darker kind of, I mean, the civil war has begun. So there's mm -hmm. a lot uh, to deal with that and like how that affects the family, I think. Um, so that's, kind of a thematic thing but there's also you know the usual dickinson strange <laughs> on the nose uh <laughs> songs about sewing or whatever you know it's like uh so it, it's lots of fun stuff um but we're you know i'm still trying to you know put in the best yeah range. well you mentioned like when you're not when you're like in off season i guess are you like do you keep like a list or like a like what do you do to keep like songs you're hearing they're like oh this could be good for this show or whatever do you like keep a like a well, note on the notes app or like a playlist or something like what do you do for all, you know for all the shows i work on you know like for dickinson for example like there's i have folders like you know they're like vocal folders that are broken mm -hmm. out like bittersweet songs happy songs or you know like for season two with dickinson i had like eyesight folder and fame and like anytime i come across a song that kind of fit into those different things i would you know throw them in there and then i also kept like a mixtape for elena which was like the, my favorites you know um but yeah, I think a big part of it is just cataloging everything as you as you hear it. Um, you know, because I think we were down for almost a year between season two and season three. So uh, you know, a lot of it was just like gathering stuff. And there's like you know, there's also like an instrumentals folder I have, which and there it's also like sad or you know, a downtrodden or victory or we you know whatever it is. Just so like when I need to pull stuff for scenes, I it's easy to kind of go and uh, find those things. Yeah. Yeah. Devo Yates, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Music supervisor for Dickinson, season two of which is on Apple TV Plus right now. Thanks so much. Thank you.